What's the highest you've ever slept at? Almost a mile. When you don't have a fear of heights, it's not really scary. It's like being in the craziest treehouse that you can possibly imagine. That's Mark Sinnott. He's a professional rock climber, and he's talking about sleeping in a tent. They're called tortoise ledges. That's hanging off the side of a mountain. He's been climbing for over 30 years, and his favorite walls to climb are really, really high. Alpine bait wall climbing is Here? the pursuit of scaling the biggest yeah. cliffs on planet Earth. Oh, and here. They take a few days to summit, so he has to camp out along the way. So I want to know, what does it feel like to sleep in a portal ledge hanging off the side of a mountain? The one thing that's more or less ever present in the mountains is wind. It can be pretty violent. You can experience hurricane force winds. There's also this thing that we call the Bronco Ride. Wind comes in, hits a cliff, and it really has nowhere to go except for up. Eventually it hits you and your ledge, and it can lift the whole thing up. So you can be suspended. And then, of course, the ledge like slams into the wall. You're just thinking about surviving. And that wasn't the worst of it. The smell in the ledge is, is not... It's not nice. You don't change your clothes. You don't bathe. It's wicked scummy. But people love it. They continue to climb and explore through all of this punishment because there's still that one question left. How does it feel? The way it makes you feel is like a tiny speck of dust. It's very empowering. It really is just like kind of the most spectacular spot that you can be on planet Earth. Right after school, I just like try to like run to the gym so I can climb. <laughs> it's a dangerous sport, but the only thing that I'm afraid of is not being able to get to the top. <laughs> With climbing, I don't think that it really matters with how big you are. If you're smaller, you can hold on longer, and your hands might be smaller, so it can fit more fingers on hold. I started climbing in Central Park when I was six years old. Now, I don't think I can like live without it. Close to the top of the climb you're trying to do, your forearms usually feel like they're gonna explode and they're gonna like burst open and you feel like you have to let go. But with climbing, you just can't let go. I think that climbing is, it's obviously a sport, but it's also like a dance. You sort of have to be able to like flow up the wall and come up with your own technique to get to the top. I think People are shocked if I do something that they can't do or something because I'm still really young and I'm a girl. So like doing something that even if a guy can't do is pretty special. <laughs> Devil's Tower is an amazingly special place. It's just up and out of the prairie, like, what happened here? There's something inexplicable, but happily undeniable about the power of Devil's Tower. I'm Frank Sanders, and I am a professional rock climbing guide. Not sure how I got here, but the shoe really fits. I've been climbing since I was 15, so I guess I've been climbing 50 years. I'm 65 years old, still doing it. 
First time I saw the Devil's Tower up real and close was June of 1972. And that night, the sky was full of lightning. The flashes, the booms, illuminated the tower. I was intimidating, sure. That's why I came all that way, to be intimidated. I have somewhere around 2,000 ascents of the tower. The joy in guiding is to be along when somebody else hits that experience and you get to share it. It's fantastic. The rock wants to be climbed. And if you look at the rock, the rock will show you right where to touch and how hard to touch. Right on, partner. The tower is an ever-ready partner. I don't want to sound too trippy here, but you touch it, it touches you. Getting to the top of the tower is both a physical and an emotional, spiritual journey. It looks like I can't do it, but then in your heart you believe you can. To be on top, to be honest with you, for me, is a letdown. We've run out of rock to climb. Right now, Devil's Tower, if I had to pick one word, is home for me. I'm happy. We are not going to be to this region of Guizhou, China is famous for its sprawling mountains, rivers, and massive caves. It's here that a little-known ancient Miao tradition of cave-based rock climbing is carried on by a few locals known as Spider-Men. This Miao burial tradition faded into obscurity, and what remained was a unique method of collecting rare medicinal herbs that some say remedy diseases such as asthma and rheumatism. The Spider-Men, with their unparalleled climbing skills, are the only people who can get them. We when people say they summit for the view, I think they're missing a lot of the equation of why we do the things we do. The summit, honestly, is pretty anticlimactic. The movement is for me the most exciting part. My name is Eric Weimer, and I'm the first blind person to have climbed the tallest peak in every continent. When I was four or five years old, I was diagnosed with this incredibly rare disease called retinoschisis. It attacked my retinas and essentially unraveled them. When I finally went blind, it was a weird relief, like the worst thing had happened, so there's nothing else to lose. 
There was a recreational group taking blind kids rock climbing, and that was it for me. It was sort of the full package of adventure. All the things I thought I wouldn't have as a blind person. You need 14 for this pitch? Yeah, I'm counting them right now. Okay. When I get onto a rock face, I actually feel like I'm in my element. The things that sighted people learn to do with their eyes, I've learned to do with my hands. When I'm clipping a bolt through a carabiner, I'm feeling it, I'm making sure it's correctly clipped, and if I fall, that that carabiner is gonna hold me. I can't look up the rock and see the holds and plan a big route. I can only see as far as my hands. It's breathtakingly exciting. Sometimes you hear those cars way down below you in the floor of the canyon. I love that sound of emptiness. A lot of external stuff sort of disappears and you're thinking about nothing but that next hold in front of you. So it's very, very meditative, very much kind of like an inner mind sport. I like that, I think that's the best pitch. Could you feel that space, like the exposure down there? Yeah, I mean, especially with these trucks flying by down there, it kind of echoes through the whole canyon and you can hear everything. Yeah. What do you say we top out? Yeah, that's I mean, it's right up here, right? Yeah. Okay. As a blind climber, it's really hard and you just sort of have to embrace that suffering. Blindness is just a thing that happened to me. I think like all adversities, we got to use them as a catalyst to push you in new directions. It's the idea of turning bad things into good things, and it's something I think we all could use. <laughs>